Hello and welcome to the GCSE Biology tutorial for Topic 5, Homeostasis and Response. This tutorial covers Part 1, the Nervous System. This includes homeostasis, the nervous system, reflexes, the brain and the eye. This is quite a large topic and so the rest of the information is found in other tutorials. Starting with homeostasis, what does this mean? Well, it basically means maintaining a stable environment inside your body, keeping things the same in your body. And that's important because cells need to be kept in the same conditions and so do enzymes. Examples might include maintaining blood glucose levels, maintaining internal body temperatures of 37 degrees, or maintaining water levels. And it's controlled by a process called negative feedback. And ne negative feedback basically works in this way. Receptors in your body detect if something is too low or too high. Your brain then receives this information and coordinates a response. And then effectors in the body produce this response and which counteracts that change and brings the levels back down or back up to achieve an optimum level. We'll be looking at negative feedback later on in the topic when we look at blood glucose levels. So the nervous system. The nervous system is basically used to detect and respond to changes in the surroundings. And we call those changes stimuli. The central nervous system is made up of your brain, the spinal cord, so this is in mammals and vertebrates in particular, and neurons. And neurons are a type of nerve cell. There are receptors in your body that detect the stimuli. So for example, you'll have receptors in your eyes, in the retina, that detect light, or receptors in your nose that detect smell. Effectors, these are muscles or glands that respond to impulses, and we'll look at those later on when we look at the pathway of a response. Going back to neurons, there are two main types in your body. The sensory neurons, so they sense um, the information and carry it from the receptors to the central nervous system and then motor neurons think of motor and, and movement they carry the information from the central nervous system to the effectors so to the muscles and the glands and information is passed through the nervous system through electrical impulses going back to topic one we looked at nerve cells this is a general picture of a nerve cell and Nerve cells or neurons have different shapes depending on whether they're sensory or motor, um, etc. But in general, a nerve cell is long and branched to can keep on connecting to more neurons. The gap between one nerve cell and another is called a synapse. And that's where the electrical impulse stops and is transferred chemically instead as neurotransmitters. And once it gets to the other side of the gap, it then turns back into a new electrical impulse and then carries on. So how does the central nervous system coordinate a response? Well, going back to that word stimuli, so the stimulus is whatever changes in the surroundings. So it might be, for example, light. Um, receptors then detect that change. So, for example, receptors in the eye detect light. And this sends a message, these then send a message along sensory neurons to the central nervous system so for example to the brain the brain then coordinates a response and sends information along motor neurons to the effectors so to a muscle or a gland and then the muscle or the gland cause a response so say for example you're watching tv you may decide that the program isn't something you want to watch so the message is sent to your brain and then you then pick up a remote control and turn the channel now that is not a reflex, it's something that you consciously are thinking of doing, even though it can be quick. A really fast response that doesn't require any conscious part of the brain is called a reflex. And the reason they're so quick and automatic is to prevent injury, so to prevent you, prevent you hurting yourself. For example, blinking if dust gets into your eye or removing your hand away from a hot plate. And the, the passage of information is called a reflex arc. And it starts with a stimulus, which is detected by receptors. Receptors pass information to, sense, to a sensory neuron. This then connects to a relay neuron, most commonly in the spinal 
cord, so it does not go to the brain. The motor neuron, sorry, the relay neuron then connects to a motor neuron. That then passes the message to an effector, which carries out a response. A common example might be moving your hand away from a hot plate or a candle, as shown here. So the receptors in the skin detect the change in heat, so the stimulus. They pass a message along sensory neuron, which connects to a relay neuron in the spinal cord, which connects to a motor neuron, which goes to the muscle. The muscle then contracts, and you move your hand away quickly. You'll also need to know how to investigate reaction times. Reaction times are how long it takes for someone to respond to a stimulus. And an experiment that you would need to know is the effect of caffeine on reaction time. So because caffeine is a stimulant, it is thought to speed up reaction rates. And you would do this by getting a person to put their arm on the edge of, edge of a table, holding a ruler between the person's thumb and forefinger, and then letting go of the ruler with no warning, and recording the distance at which they catch the ruler. And then you can convert that into a reaction time. And you'd repeat this a number of times to get an average and test before and after drinking caffeine. Now, a more accurate way to test reaction time would be to use a computer program which would eliminate any human error and is also more accurate. Here are some key questions. If you pause the tutorial now and give yourself 10 minutes to answer the questions. So, what is the central nervous system? Well, that is made up of the brain, the spinal cord, neurons. What neurons send electrical impulses from the receptors? These are sensory neurons. What's a reflex? Well it's an automatic quick response that does not require a conscious part of your brain and it prevents injury. The pathway of a reflex arc would be the stimulus to receptor to a sensory neuron, to relay neuron, to motor neuron, to an effector, which then carries out the response. Moving on to the brain. The brain is a complex organ. You just need to know some parts of it. Remember, it controls and coordinates the body. So starting off with the cerebellum, that's responsible for muscle coordination. You've also got the medulla oblongata, and that controls unconscious activity, so things you don't think about doing, like breathing or your heart rate, heartbeat. And then you've got the cerebrum hemisphere, or the cerebral cortex, and that's responsible for consciousness, intelligence, memory, language, and, and is split into two halves, the left and the right. The brain can be studied in a number of ways. It can be stimulated with electricity using electrodes to produce an EEG, shown here. Scientists also have studied people with brain damage to look at how the brain responds. And also an MRI scan can be done, which produces a detailed picture of the brain. Brain disorders you may have heard about are things such as Parkinson's, a stroke, or a brain tumour. You also need to know about the parts of an eye. So, the eye is covered in a tough outer layer called the sclera. And then you've got the cornea at the front of the eye. That's the clear, transparent outer layer, so it's see-through. And that lets light in through the eye. The iris is the coloured part of the eye. So when you look at someone's eye, they've got blue eyes or brown eyes, that's the iris. And that actually controls the size of the pupil, the con controls the size of the black hole. And it does so with muscles. We'll look at that later on. So the iris controls how much light enters the eye. The pupil is actually a hole that allows the light in. There's the pupil there. And the lens is behind this, and that focuses the light onto the retina, which is at the back of the eye. The lens is controlled by ciliary muscles and suspensory ligaments, and we'll look at how the lens behaves later on. The retina is at the back of the eye, and that contains receptor cells which detect the light and detect colour as well. And then they send a message along this optic nerve, which carries impulses from the receptors to the brain. Let's look at one particular 
response, which is the iris reflex. So the iris reflex occurs, remember, it's automatic, you don't think about doing it, and it's to prevent light damaging the retina and allowing you to see even when it's dark. And it's all because of the iris, remember the coloured part, containing muscles. And those muscles are triggered into responding to changes in light. So when it's really bright, as shown here, the muscles in the iris do the following. The circular muscles, they contract, and radial muscles relax. That This causes the pupil to get smaller, so less light can get in and damage the eye. When it's dark or in dim light, this time the radial muscles in the iris contract and the circular muscles in the iris relax and this makes the pupil wider or it dilates and this allows more light to then enter the eye when it's darker. And again, this is a reflex because it's automatic. So how does the eye change when looking at near and far objects? Well, when you're looking at something close up, you've got ciliary muscles and suspensory ligaments which hold the lens in place. So ciliary muscles contract, suspensory ligaments slacken or relax, and the lens becomes wider and fatter. And that means that when light enters it, the lens refracts the light more and focuses it onto the back of your eye so you can see clearly. When you're looking at far away objects, this time the ciliary muscles relax and the suspensory ligaments contract so the lens becomes stretched and thinner and this refracts, refracts the light less so it focuses it onto the retina again. This means you can clearly see things that are close and far away. Now sometimes you can't and this causes long-sightedness and short-sightedness. So starting off with long-sightedness or hypopia that's when you cannot focus on near objects, so you can see things further away. And that can be because the eyeball is the wrong shape or the lens. And so the light is refracted behind the retina as shown here, rather than onto the retina. So you, you don't get a clear image. This can be corrected by using convex lenses, so they curve outwards. And these refract the light and focus it onto the retina. Short-sightedness or myopia is when you can't focus on a distant object. This might be again because the lens or the eyeball is the wrong shape, but this time the lens or eyeball refracts the light too much and in front of the retina as shown here. It's corrected by concave lenses so they curve inwards and these refract the light to focus it correctly onto the retina. So when you've got glasses, there'll be different shapes. You can't really tell by looking at glasses at the different shapes because the lenses have been thin so much, but some will be convex and some will be concave depending on your vision. Now there's other ways to correct vision defects. So contact lenses, which some people prefer to glasses because they're lightweight, but there is risk of eye infections. Laser eye surgery, this is when an actual laser is used by a doctor to change the shape of the cornea, remember that transparent outer part of the eye, front part of the eye, um, and that means it then can refract the light correctly onto the retina. Um, and this can help correct vision so you don't need to wear glasses, but there is some risk of complication, although it is rare. And then there is a lens replacement where artificial plastic lenses are used if the lens is really damaged but again because this is an operation there is uh, risk and more so with risk of damage and even loss of sight. So there's a six mark question after this topic if you pause and give yourself 10 minutes to answer. So the question was describe how vision defects can be corrected and it's important that you recognize this as six marks so you don't just focus on one thing. So you could talk about long-sightedness and that's when you can't focus on near objects because the light is refracted behind the retina and you, this can be corrected using convex lenses. You can also talk about short-sightedness and that's when you can't focus on distant objects and the light is refracted in front of the retina and that's corrected by concave lenses. And you might want to put in diagrams to help your ex explanation. You could also mention contact lenses and the different types of contact lenses, so hard and soft lenses and the fact that they can cause some eye infections and laser eye surgery. 
where the cornea is changed in shape. But again, you can mention there could be some risks of complications. And finally, the artificial lens replacement, which has a higher risk of, of infection. So remember to discuss all different types of vision defects and also how they can be corrected. So in summary, we've talked about homeostasis, the nervous system, reflexes, the brain, the eye, and the practicals we've looked at are investigating reaction time. Thank you.